this as a drum maker. Let me, let me add. Peter, I love it, I love it. Now we're moving on to the kungas. Wow, all the different types of work that he's put in to develop these drums. I would say, man, they're almost just like the motherland of Cuba. What inspired you to make, to come up with these uh, kungas? You know, I always wanted to make drums. Uh, starting out when I was, you know, 15, 16 years old, I started playing. Yes, and yes. I, you know, I just, uh, I'm one of those guys. I have to make stuff. Uh, and I love working with wood. I, I have a, a need, an addiction to build stuff. And this is so much more rewarding and satisfying than anything I've ever built. Uh, and then to actually have them out in the world and, and see people play them, mm -hmm. it's just, it's, it's phenomenal. It's wow. absolutely phenomenal. I know that makes you feel really good. Okay. Matter of fact, you were telling me not too long ago you went to a performance and you actually saw some of your drums that you built a long time ago. Well, my early drums, probably uh, among the first series of drums that, that, that I sold, uh -huh. and it was it was fabulous. I played them for a little while. Yes. They played great. I, you know, I, did, I, I didn't want to take my hands off. I wanted to put my finger. <laughs> That's the sign of some gorgeous drums. And Peter, we were talking about the shape of the drum. Now, would you already have to steam this drum, or it's already steamed? No, this is already steamed. It's all bent. Uh, it's ready to go. Actually, uh, this is a, this is a stave out of this. You can't use this because of the hole. Okay. But so I start with pieces like this. I cut them off here and here. The notches where that goes. Okay. And then reshape them mm -hmm. into a shape like this. Wow! For simply from this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So these wow. go on the saw. I reshape them. Okay. Uh, and uh, because there's differences in the thickness uh -huh. of the of the barrel wood, it's not consistent. Okay. Uh, everything has to index off the inside. So I cut these biscuits, uh, mm -hmm. cut these slots, and put the biscuits in, mm -hmm. and that lines up the inside perfectly. The outside is wow. going to get turned on the lathe, okay. so that doesn't matter. Okay. But the inside has to be smooth. Gotcha. And, and you know, if you if you look at the drum behind you, mm -hmm. you'll see that it's it's perfectly lined up. Right. So that uh, that lines it up and it also gives the uh, the shell a lot more strength. Wow. Can you imagine the work that actually goes in before you even sit down and play? All right, so this is the result. This this uh, is a whole barrel. Wow. Uh, reshaped uh, and glued. And glued. The inside is uh, as smooth as it can be. Wow. The inside all lines up. And, and uh, I use I use a uh, marine epoxy. It won't come apart. That uh, with the with the uh, with the splines in there. This is the strongest shell you can you can possibly. Have. So would you say this? You can almost use this to make boats. Oh yeah. This, okay. With Absolutely. This okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. People trust their necks in the middle of the ocean. On this glue. On this glue. Okay. So, <laughs> these drums don't come apart. Okay. So they, uh, after they're cut and glued, this is what it looks like. It's pretty rough, pretty crude. Yes. Uh, then it goes from this stage uh, to the lathe in the back of the room and ends up looking like this. Why don't you lift that one up? Wow. This now, is gorgeous. And that this, this French oak. The way they cut it is quarter slot, so you get all this, this figuring. Mm -hmm. These are called pith rays. Okay. And they're just gorgeous. They capture the light. They, wow, they, I you love know, they, it. They reflect the lights differently than the rest of the grain. So, Peter, this is actually, this is going to look like this. When yeah, you absolutely, absolutely. Wow. A little bit smaller. This will be smaller than that one. Wow. Beautiful. This is, uh, this is another oak barrel uh, that I've converted into a conga. And uh, I leave, I leave the little uh, uh, traces of evidence that it had a former life in it. I, I just think it's kind of cool. Personality. Personality, exactly. Some of it gets covered up because he's going to have five bands on. I haven't put hardware on them before, but that's the traditional way to do it. Wow. So we're going to have five bands on these guys. Um, 
The lathe, the lathe was uh, one of the first uh, pieces of equipment that I needed to build. Uh, it's tough to find a lathe that will uh, that will actually turn this big an object. Uh, it, it was a uh, first design, and it works really great. Uh, this is what it looks like when it's going. So it's going about 500 RPMs. Okay. I can't adjust the speed. Right. But uh, 500 uh, RPMs works out really well. Uh, it turns the drum fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still, you know, it's still a ton of work to make a to make a, a rough shape like we had. Saw it right, it was right. Drum like this. And so, when you are turning the lathe, I, are you sanding down at this particular time, or what, what part Actually, are you on the job? We, well, we cut. Uh, there's a, I have a couple of tool rests that I put here, and we, you know, we cut with the, with various shaping tools. Uh -huh. yeah. And once, once the drum is rough would, shaped, would this be one of the tools? That that's you, a scraper. Yeah. A scraper. Okay. So I, you know that 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 takes out some of the scratches. Wow. And then wow. the final shape is done with sanding blocks. Oh, okay. Uh, and that, that, gets, that gets this section truly flat, this section truly flat. My favorite tool is uh, for shaping is this one. It, uh, it's uh, just my basic workhorse utilitarian cutting tool. I use it so much. Uh, it started out that long and we've sharpened off that much. Uh, I sharpened this thing about a dozen times in, in the course of turning one drum. Peter, I want to be the first one to play on them drums when you get the rings on. Peter, um, yeah, I love the cajones, the cajones, especially this is a, a tall cajon here. Is this a cajon? Is yeah, it, what you cool. call the cajon? Yeah. yeah. What's the difference between this This is a real popular instrument in Cuba, actually. Wow. Uh, they, you know, them being resourceful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As they have to be. Uh -huh. uh, you know, not everybody can afford a pongo. Uh -huh. So they, right. they can, you know, they can afford a little plywood to make a, a box out of. Right. Uh, this one is, is special. It has the uh, has the same top that we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, the the joinery is all lock mitered. It's not gonna come apart. Okay. Uh, How much you have? Yeah. This is this is a prototype. This is a sort of experimental with this particular drum. I've never done uh, a snare in, in the tall cajon before. Uh, but it, it works. It uh, works. People like it. Uh, plays well. Uh, 